We're here in Chandler Park, which is on the east side of Detroit. And Chandler Park is a street, it's a neighborhood, it's a community. Ten years ago, this neighborhood really, really struggled with crime, with the perception of crime, with housing values, with people trying to make ends meet. I often think that in the climate change environmentalist sector, we often discount people of color who are living in low-income communities, that they don't care about climate change or alternative land use or green infrastructure. And that's just not true. While residents were kind of organizing around their neighborhood, then they came together specifically around this park and they created the Friends of Chandler Park, which eventually turned into a Chandler Park Conservancy. And what they did is they really created a partnership with the city and businesses around here because you need you know, all these different sectors coming together, right, to make something as major as this kind of infrastructure happen. And I think the, the community that came together, they created their community plan. They advocated for a better use of this park and the vacant land in their neighborhood. And I, I think there's so much value in lifting that up. With climate change and in the increasing frequency and more intense storms, right, our already overtaxed wastewater treatment system really goes into overdrive. And the Clean Water Act is requiring Detroit, like other cities, to, to get a handle on these, these untreated combined sewer overflows. When it rains and the pipes are overwhelmed, the sewage is just discharged, right? Right into our, into our Detroit River. So the Clean Water Act requires the city to get those CSOs under control. And if Detroit doesn't do that, by 2027, they're gonna have to spend another $1.2 billion on gray infrastructure to stop those CSOs. So that's a real incentive and motivation for the water department and the city to do something more creative that can add benefits to neighborhoods like this at a lower cost with, with more benefits than just putting an underground gray infrastructure. And some of what we try to do at Detroit Future City is around that kind of community education, helping people to understand what the effects are of green stormwater infrastructure in your own neighborhood, that you can be your own ambassador, making sure that the neighborhood you're living in as it continues to change is also a safe and healthy place for you to raise your family. This is an example of how you can take um, something that's a real problem, stormwater that goes into people's basements and floods it or overwhelms our sewer system and shoots you know, sewage out into our Detroit River. Instead, you can harness it and put it into a beautiful amenity like this. You know, it's just kind of a, a really beautiful nature-based solution that helps us build a more resilient future. I love that. And I think what I love about that the most, Jody, is that this is happening in the middle of one of the lowest income census tracts in Detroit, in the state. You don't have to live in a high income area to have nature and beauty and a functional wetland that will serve you personally living in this community to benefit from that. And that to me is real equity. When we talk about how we can make sure that all Detroiters benefit from investments. It, we're talking about public infrastructure and public investments too, that we all should be benefiting from that, no matter where you live in the city.